Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation. An exponent that triples. Yay! Okay, we've done the double before so this time we're going to be going through the tripling process and we're going to find out basically like you take a number like i, a complex imaginary number, you raise it to an unknown power which is z that is equivalent to multiplying i by 3, which is tripling it. That's why I call this an exponent that triples. All right, I'll be presenting two methods. I don't know if I did two methods with the other one, but you can find out. Go ahead and just check it out. Let's start with the first method. So we have i to the z equals 3i. First method, I want to put the i's together, right? Why? Because I want to get all the i's together on one side and then maybe leave the number on the right hand side. In other words, the 3. How can I do that? I can basically divide both sides by i. i is not 0, so I should be able to divide, right? Can I do this? Sure, why not? Okay, when you divide by i, you're dividing by i to the power 1, so you're going to subtract the exponents. I guess the same rules apply, right? Doesn't it? i to the power z minus 1. I'm trying to be careful here because complex numbers are somewhat different. You know, sometimes I do things that normally is done with real numbers, but they don't apply to complex numbers. For example, if you have a to the power b and then raise that to the power c, it doesn't always give you a to the power bc as with real numbers. And of course, the, if the base is negative, so on and so forth, there's a lot of complications. Anyways, we got this equation which kind of looks simpler, maybe, right? Let's go ahead and invoke Euler's polar form. I, as you know, is on the argand plane, or what is called the complex plane, appears here, which is the imaginary axis, then this is the real one, and it is one unit away from zero, which actually gives us its modulus, but not only the modulus, because another thing that's really important is the argument, and the argument is the angle it makes, in this case, it is pi over two radians. Make sense? So I wanted to magnify a little bit so you can see it better, hopefully, right? Was that better? Now, okay, this is probably good, okay. So, we can write uh, i in polar form, and any complex number can be written as r e to the i theta, where theta is the argument and r is the modulus, so i can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2. But, instead of just writing or using pi over 2 as the argument, because I can add multiples of 2 pi to this, like keep rotating, right? I just want to add multiples of 2 pi as 2 pi n, n is an integer, let me say that before I forget. And the 3, this is i, by the way, okay, in polar form, right? Sort of, kind of, maybe. We'll see. There's going to be some interesting stuff towards the end, like some little bit of complications, which we'll verify. And then 3 can be written as 3 times e to the power 2 pi ki. What is e to the power 2 pi ki? This is actually 1. If you think about it, this is 1 in the complex world. In other words, we complexified it so that we can use the polar forms. Great, so now let's go ahead and plug everything in to our equation. We have i to the power z minus 1 equals 3, remember? Now we're going to replace i with e to the power i times pi over 2 times, I mean plus 2 pi n. This is i, we're going to raise it to the power z, or I can just multiply by, I, you know, just write i z, same thing, 3 e to the power 2 pi ki, okay? k and n are both integers. d is not, probably, right? So, what do we do next? Go ahead and multiply by this, and that's going to give you e to the iz, something, something. Now, we're going to go ahead and natural log both sides, and that's going to give us the following. i, z, times the expression inside the parentheses. That is equal to, now, we are natural logging this product, remember? That's also basically how you can find the log, like the log, complex logarithm, uh, which is ln 3 plus e to the power 2 pi ki. When you ln it, it's just going to be 2 pi ki. Make sense? Because ln e is 1. Cool. We're supposed to find z, so why not divide both sides by this expression? But of course, we also have the i, so maybe we can do this. Divide both sides by i times the pi thing, right? The whole thing. So in other words, we're going to get z. Oh, by the way, uh, oops, I, I, I realized I messed up. This is supposed to be z minus 1. Sorry about that. Not just z. So we can modify, we can fix it real quick. This is going to be i times z minus 1. And then when I divide, I'm going to end up with z minus 1. That's the only difference. Make sense? 
Great. Now, if you divide both sides by i times this, of course, um, dividing by i is equivalent to multiplying by negative i. So our expression is going to look like this. Uh, negative, negative what? Okay, can I, um, okay, let me write it this way. <laughs> I was trying to keep it short, but I don't want to skip steps here. So maybe ln 3 plus 2 pi ki, and then I'm going to multiply that by i times this. And then, of course, my next step is going to be multiplying both sides by um, i maybe, right, to get rid of the i at the bottom. But if you multiply by 2i, it's actually better because, uh, let's see, 2i is uh, going to do a better job because, uh, well, I think I'm going to use negative 2i. Okay, here we go. This is what, what I was looking for. Negative 2i here and negative 2i here. You know why? Because when you multiply i by negative i, it's going to give you a positive one, so we can totally forget about it. So the only thing that brings in is going to be a 2, and which that's going to cancel out the terms. Okay, here we go. Z minus 1 is going to equal negative uh, 2i ln 3. And when you multiply these two things, that's going to give you minus i squared, which is positive 1. So it's going to be 4 pi k, right? Cool. And then we're going to go ahead and divide by this, uh, of course, the 2 cancelled out, we ended up with pi plus 4 pi n, right? If I didn't make any mistakes. This is z minus 1 still, let's simplify as much as possible, and then we will uh, just uh, add 1 to both sides. You get negative i ln 3 plus 4 pi k, and then you kind of factor out a pi maybe, and write this as 4n plus 1 pi. I don't know if that's a huge improvement, but it looks a little better. And now we can go ahead and add one. And adding one to both sides is actually equivalent to just copying the denominator and putting in the numerator. So z is going to look like this. Negative 2 i ln 3 plus 4 pi k. Remember n and k are integers. Plus 4 n plus 1 times pi. And all of that is divided by 4 n plus 1 pi. Great. Awesome. Now, I'm going to raise a question, but I'll do it uh, towards the end of the second method. Okay, so, so go ahead and... Hold on to this method because we're going to revisit this and I will tell you something. But before that, I need to talk. Let me leave some room there so I can come back. Second method basically uses a different idea. Instead of, you know, dividing by i, let's just do it directly. Now, what is i? i is e to the power i pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Remember that? And this is also uh, used uh, for finding i to the i which cancels out the i's, by the way, or gives you a negative 1 there. Uh, anyways, I made a video about that too. You can go ahead and check it out. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I forgot to say that at the beginning, okay? Now, plug this in. You're going to get e to the iz multiply by pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. So we get something very similar, right? And then let's see what this is going to turn into because I need to tell you something. And this equals 3e i pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Remember how we wrote the 3? And then, I'm sorry, did I say 3? No, sorry about that. This is 3i. Okay, I just totally assumed that you would know what I'm doing here. But this is what it is. And now, if you natural log both sides, you're going to get iz multiplied by, do you see what iz? 2 pi n, and then that's going to equal ln 3 plus, this is equal to 3i, i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Now, the question is, do we need n? I want you to think about it because I'm going to answer it. I don't think so. So in this case, then, isn't n equal to 0? So we don't need it, not use it. If we do that, here's what happens. i z pi over 2, notice that this disappears, is equal to ln 3 plus i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And then if you simplify this, and that's going to give you at the end, z equals negative i times ln 3 plus i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And then all of that is divided by pi over 2. But I can go ahead and divide by pi and then double this. And this should do the work, right? And if you also make another assumption, you could hopefully come up with something nicer. But let's go back to the first method. Remember, we were going to talk about it. And we said, okay, I don't think n is necessary because I'll tell you why. So n should not be there or n is equal to 0. If that's the case, then you get something nice. Z equals, 
Oh, by the way, if n is equal to 0, you're going to get the same answer. But let's just suppose n is needed. So I want to use n equals 1 and k equals 1 here. And that gives us z equals negative. Um, wait a minute. Not, where does the negative come from? Sorry, I, I'm confused. 4 pi from here. And then minus 2 i ln 3. Plus here, if n is 1, you're going to get 5 pi. And that's going to be like 9 pi. And guess what? When you plug this into Wolfram Alpha, you're not going to get z, or it's not going to give you 3i. You can do e to the power this, right? But you're not going to be getting the result from there. So that which tells me uh, n should not be there. What do you think? Let us know, because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.